complicated jujitsu move where you got five or six different things you got to try and figure out. You got to most of this stuff is super simple. You just need to learn how to do it. Get a partner and do it all the time. Does that make sense? It's it's not complex. So what I'm going to show you now is what I think is the best way to stop someone else from getting a really good clinch position. All right? And it starts before he clinch. Once, once he gets his hand like this, he's got the clinch. I've got to counter that at that point. So as Dean is reaches in, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my shoulder up just a little bit. I'm not necessarily trying to bend my head over, and I'm not doing something crazy. As he reaches, I'm just getting that shoulder up so that as he grabs, he's grabbing more of this than as he gets low down here. That's the position that's really tough. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. So again, as he reaches, I'm just getting the shoulder up a little bit. Still got my hands up, right? So now he's going to clamp onto that. All I want to do is take five fingers outside, keep my elbow low. I'm going to pull straight out, down, circle in to a bicep tie. Does that make sense? He reaches with that one. I get his shoulder up, five fingers out and down. I circle in. Now he circles in to try and do the same thing again. Wow. Just keep going. It's that simple. Now if I grab him, he should have gotten his shoulder up there, right? <laughs> <laughs> so if I reach up for him, he gets the shoulder high. Wow. He pulls it off. And he circles in, right? So again, there you go. It's got to be second nature at a certain point. Pulls it off. Wow. He reaches for me. get it up nice and high. And I'll tell you from this position, I'm pulling it off, but in reality, I'm already inside. If I've got my shoulder here, I am already inside this position and he's got nothing. And if he lets me get that, he's in a tough position. Does that make sense? So you get with your partner, they reach out with a hand, shoulder up, pull it off, circle down, other hand. Wow. Now he can circle in and reach again. And just do one side at a time. You can take them off. You can move your shoulder in. Either one of those. Make sense? Sorry. After you, after you do that ten times, the other guy reaches. Don't do that. Don't just let your shoulder hang. <laughs> get that a video. Okay, ready? One, two, three. You got to get good at getting those shoulders up because I can tell you if a guy really gets a deep clinch on the other side of your neck, you know, it's like when you get caught in a triangle and you're like, well, coach, how do I counter this? Well, you tap and you start over. It's tough, right? It can be done. There's lots of things you can do, but he's got control of your body and he's moving you around and it just gets really tough. So now we're going to do a, a counter where I get my shoulder up a little bit, right? And he does it quite good. He doesn't get everything. So I'm going to, you see my shoulder right here? One of the key things I was doing before, I was getting my shoulder inside. But I've got it outside at this point. He still doesn't have a really good uh, grip on my neck. So I want to use this shoulder. And do you see when I turn my body? I'm not doing this. I'm not trying to get away from him because you see all this extension in his elbow? It just it, it keeps coming out. So from right here, again, I am watching for that hand, right? He may be trying to reach with that one, so I may have to do this at the same time. We're not going to worry about it for now. So as I turn, and I'm just going to pop my neck back a little bit. I'm still keeping my eyes on him, though. I don't want to take my eyes. I don't want to turn my head and turn back around to a cross. So bam, from right here, all I'm going to do for our purposes, it's a ton of stuff you can do. But from right here, I'm just going to pull, take it back. That's the right? He reaches, 
I get a little bit of the shoulder. I'm turning. Pull. Pull him. Take his back. Now, what I want him to do, when you're training these things, both sides should be training at the same time. So now, if I do this to Dean, and he shucks mine off, and he tries to take my back, I'm automatically blocking this. Because if he can't get my hip, we always go for this, right? Which is perfectly fine. But at a minimum, you would like to have that hip control. Because at that point, he's stuck to my back. If I can keep him from getting that, he definitely can't get these two in. Right? So I keep my elbow in, I keep this down low, and I'm ready, right? If he comes up to choke me, oh, go around my arm. Yes, I'm still right here. Wow. So that he can't control my back. So both people should be working at the same time. So when you're doing this, the person that's doing this is called seal control, S-E-A-L, like a seal on an engine. You're trying to keep that seal. Every once in a while, let the person get it. Let them get both hands. Let them grab a hip. It's perfectly fine. You just want to try it every once in a while to practice your defense, right? So he grabs, I get the shoulder up, but not quite good enough. I turn the shoulder, and I'm only looking away a little bit. Pull. Oh. You got to be quick. You got Especially as someone who knows what they're doing, right? <laughs> as soon as you feel this, you've got to automatically be doing this because they're going to get you. Does that make sense? Sure. Okay, give it a shot. Sir. Ready? One, two, three. So when you're reaching around, allow your Uki kind of get a feel where he needs to move his head. Let me show you two more techniques. This is the main one I like to use, right? A lot of you guys are still trying to use your hands to do stuff. It's really turning that shoulder, popping the head away just a little. I'm still looking at him. And then I'm just using his hand to pull the person so that they're all balanced and I can catch them. Does that make sense? Sure. Now, there is a way, there are lots of ways you can do this. He grabs, I can just reach up. And again, you'll see that almost all the time when I do things with my, my arms, I don't do this. I try and keep my elbows in most of the time because I want to be in nice and tight. Anytime you poke an arm out, you're asking for an arm drag, all kinds of stuff. Just to grab him here, take it across, pull. Right? Don't uh, run around behind him. Good, good, Dean. <laughs> <laughs> Arms in, elbows nice and tight, up and over. I'm pulling him. If I run around Dean, and he's going to turn into me, and we're just going to be right back to here, right? So he grabs. I'm just going to go up and over. Pull. Nice. Make sense? Sure. 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 The other one, and this is a little bit harder. He grabs, right? I reach around, grab his far ear, shuck it off like that. <laughs> Hate that one. <laughs> <laughs> if you got short arms, it may not work. So those other two will work better for you. But from right here again, I'm protecting. I'm going to reach and grab the ear, right? I'm not trying to pull his ear off or anything. I'm trying to take all the slack out of this so that now when I pull that, I'm on his back. Make sense? Yes, sir. So you've got just your basic shuck, 
shuck and pull. You got two hand grab, pull. You got grab the ear, and I call it a shuck. Whenever I use that shoulder, shuck it off. You'll probably get to his back from there. Does that make sense? So, sure. one, two, three. here, I want him to try and collar tie me so that I can get to his back. I'll tell you, MMA or street fighting, getting to someone's back is the best position. Least danger to you and you've got more control over them. So this is a Jedi mind trick that works in a lot of different situations. If I want Dean, if we're fighting and I want Dean to kick me with the right kick, I kick him with the right kick. And he's going to come right back. It happens all the time. If I want Dean to grab me, I reach in and grab him. It's exactly what he's going to do, right? He's just, it's, we're, we're monkeys. We do exactly the same thing the other person's doing. So this particular technique, I'm trying to get him to reach for me because before he gets a really good grip, I'm going to take his back. So this is how it's going to work. Let me reach first, right? We'll go. I get him. I've got, a, I've got a pretty good collar tie here. Now, as he reaches forward, right, I'm going to take this and I'm just taking my form and bouncing up. And at the same time, duck under, take his back. And I'm trying to pull him into this position right here. And I've got his hip. I've got reasonably good control of Dean at this point. Make sense? So, my turn to blue. <laughs> yeah, I can feel that. So, I grab, as he starts to grab, I'm sorry. Boom, I'm bouncing, I'm just taking this forearm. Boom. And uh, Wing Chun, they call that a bonk out. Boom, as he reaches, reach, boom, I'm just bouncing up. At the same time, boom. ducking under, taking the back. From right here again, boom, take his back. As he stands up, oh, ah. I'll show you guys that throw. It's my favorite back throw because whenever you get someone bent over like this, the natural inclination is they want to stand up. So we're going to use that against them. I grab. Yeah, I really need a pretty good grip here because I am pulling him at the same time. I go up, duck, whoosh, look over. Take his back. Let me show you this throw. You can practice this some. So he bent over a little bit. He, naturally, he's going to stand up. All I'm doing is taking both arms, bringing him up, right to here. You don't have to throw him way in the air. Just enough so that his feet end up there. Because when they end up there and I step out of the way, he's going to fall to the mat. So here he stands up, right to here. I've got knee on belly, I've got a good grip on the arm, I can take the arm bar, I can look around for somebody else, I can tell him to stay on the ground. Does that make sense? Sir, sir, sir. So let me do it on this side. I get him. Now, boom, I'm just boom, bouncing it up. Just right from my neck. Yeah. Boom, bounce. Same time, ducking under. Right to here. Here. 
person's a lot taller, keep your hands about right here. It's the hips. <laughs> oh. He's sitting right there. I could do this if I wanted. Or if I step out of the way, damn, I'm right here. Does that make sense? Sure. Sure. Give it a shot. We'll walk around. Okay? One, two, three. <laughs> Too many, too many lower belts trying to pull a higher belt into their guard. That's a dumb strategy. You just got somebody who's better than you in your guard. I mean, unless your guard retention game is awesome, that's a bad situation. So Dean and I are fighting, right? And for our purposes right now, Dean's got his hands a little bit high. He's got this one high, right? I grab his wrist. How many times do you grab someone's wrist and you're like, what do I do with this thing? I don't know. Right? This is what you do. I take his wrist from here and I put it in my pocket. Reach through. Pull. And I got his back. Okay? High grab. Put it in your pocket. You can twist his elbow if you want. Or you can just get nice and high up toward... You get nice and high toward his shoulder here because by the time I start to pull him, I'm going to end up down here. So I start high. Now I pull Dean. Get him off balance. Get him here. And again, as he starts to stand up, I can take him back. Okay? So that's a high grip. What if Dean's got his hand there? I grab it. Same idea at this point, except. He's already got it in the pocket a little bit. Pull him and grab. There's other ways to do the arm drag besides pulling, but most of those people pick up a little bit better. It's hard for people to understand pulling the other guy. So we've got a high grip in the pocket. We've got a low grip. He's already in the pocket. Pull. Okay? So what if he's got his hands down low? I can block that same side arm with my forearm and then pull it. Make sense? Yes, sir. Block it. Maybe he's reaching for me. Block it with the forearm. Pull. Take his back. You'll notice I'm keeping this in nice and tight. I've got hip control. I'm using my shoulder to keep him low. Right? Get him bent over. If, if I just kind of pull Dean like this and let him stand up, I got no control over him. So get him off balance, get him forward. So high, in the pocket, pull. Low, grab, pull. He reaches, I'm just gonna block, pull. Does that make sense? Yes. So three different ones, high, low, four. Make sense? Yes. One, two, three. Yeah. 
He keeps his elbow out a little bit. So he keeps his elbow out and starts to pull me. I'm going to redrag him and get to his back. Does that make sense? Sure. That's why when we drag, we want to try and keep the elbow in nice and tight. The more you do this, the easier it is for him to redrag you. So he starts his arm drag. As he pulls, just take his back. That's not a redrag. The second one, right, he starts to drag me. Just gonna post on his shoulder and wipe it out, right? <clears throat> now what you gotta do early. If you let him get right up next to your body and you're here, it doesn't work anymore. So boom, I feel it, I'm gonna post and pull. But I'm still trying to stay nice and balanced here because there's stuff, I mean, he can take that arm and start trying to drag me again, right? So you've got to stay nice and balanced. The next one, he starts to drag. Pull me. It's called a high elbow. Get the high elbow in his chest. Now maybe I'm going to drag him at that point. Make sense? <laughs> so I'm going to get an elbow to the face. He drags. He's taking that elbow, putting it right in his chest. I may just want to wipe it. I may want to redrag him. So let's do those three real quick, and then I got two more. So we've got redrag, we've got high elbow, and wipe. Does that make sense? Sure. So just from right here, redrag, post, wipe it out. Here, high elbow, right in chest. Make sense? Sure. Give it a shot. One, two, three. Come on, with this. Contact on that one. Uh, 
So the redrag, the post, uh, and the elbow are kind of early and intermediate counters. Does that make sense? If Dean really gets me pulled in, yeah, I'm not posting from here. Maybe I can redrag, but it's just a big fight at that point. I'm definitely not getting my elbow in. So there's got to be counters a little bit further along. And the most basic counter that works all the time, right? As he pulls me, what's he trying to do, right? He's trying to get my hips. I can, I can keep that hand off, or as he pulls me, hip away. I get my hips way away from him. Pulls. When you turn, you better be ready to fight. I'll turn around like that. I got it. He's going to take you down. So it's very simple. You still use his hand to make sure he doesn't get it. But get those hips way away. Turn to face. That makes sense? This last one is a good technique. Um, it's a little bit scarier because I'm going to try to put my head on the inside. Right? When Dean does an arm drag, what he's trying to do, and we're going around to the outside, but if I arm drag Dean and I step inside, if I can get my head, well, never mind. Let me do it this way. As he drags me, right? I'm going to get my head inside and grab his far hip. Does that make sense? That's why I said it's a little bit scarier because you've got to get the head in there. This is an intermediate counter. I'm getting it inside. Stopping him from dragging me, controlling, get the far hip. That makes sense? Maybe I just want to take his back at that point. There's a lot of throws, there's a lot of things you can do from that position. But again, for self defense, for the most basic stuff, just go to the back. So we got hip away, he pulls. Let's turn the face. And he pulls. I get the head in. Again, I'm reaching around to get the hip, and I'm keeping this in nice and tight. Dean's got these old man's <laughs> shoulders and elbows, so this is almost like going to make him tap up. right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you quit. Oh. Does that make sense? Hip away. Go slow when you put the head in, because one, you don't want to bang your head into their chin or head to head. But just put it right here and then slide it in. I know it seems like you're going to want to do this. Structurally, your neck's not very strong here. But as he pulls me, if I put it here to begin with, and then I slide it in, this initial impact right here on most people's hairline is a good position. Let me slide it in. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense? And uh, when we were originally learning JKD, we did a lot of headbutts and we were taught right there at the hairline. And that's true when you're 20. More like that. Because your neck is very strong when you impact here. Which is why in football, right, you're tackling like this. This is bad. This is bad. So, head in. Turn. Make sense? One, two, three. <laughs> tell all of them, after every class, you should sit down, you should write notes of what you've learned. I don't know how many people do that. 
Coach Jamie and I, when we first started, we used to have to drive three, four, or five hours to a seminar on Saturday and Sunday. And we were there for six hours a day. So you got 12 hours worth of notes that you would then bring back. And we were trying to recreate that stuff. And it's hard when you don't have a coach, but a coach makes you lazy. You guys need to learn how to teach yourselves. These are the kind of notes that I would take at these things. They're not complex. I've looked at my notes in the past and, and thought, what was I trying to write there? I can't do anything about it. But you guys can look at these. But that's what you need to start doing yourself. Get a notebook. Get something so that you can start recording what you know and you can go back through it. Go, oh, okay. Coach showed this counter. See if you can recreate that in your head. Because you can do a lot of training just going through these things slow motion, visualize what you're doing. Does that make sense? Yes. So I know you got a lot of questions. If you ever, if you have questions about this or anything else, and you guys see me standing around doing next to nothing, I'm happy to talk. And I do next to nothing a lot, so I'm happy to answer questions. Anybody have a question that is just killing them right now? I'd be happy to answer. One thing that these two guys over there, when I do the hip away, and sometimes we get stuck in this position, right? And I was thinking, as soon as I saw that, I was like, well, why don't I just do the, the head in? Oh, I just get the head in at that point if I can, right? And then I'm in a pretty good position right here. Because a lot of people are kind of getting into that position. And that happens when you don't arm drag the person hard. You gotta pull, right? If, if, if you're not whiplashing their neck as you pull them, they're probably not gonna be off balance enough for you to take their back and do what you wanna do. You gotta learn to pull people. Um, one of the things I got on there that I really didn't get to was different foot positions with the arm drag. Um, this particular stepping outside and pulling I like it because I'm big and I can make people lean over. But you guys should practice that a lot because it gets you better at this. And that's a movement that you see in all grappling. This pull. Connect the elbow to the body. Pull. I'm sure Coach could sit down and show you how to do that from the guard, from the mount, from the back. It's basic. Connect the elbows. Use your body to pull them. Not your arms. Your arms are weak, your body is strong. Make sense? Yes. Sure. Okay guys, let's bow out and then we'll let coach start. Give my hand, thank you, sir. And um, and Coach Mark spent a lot of years working on that. So what we've recorded will be on our YouTube channel by the weekend. So the seminar for you guys to come out if you need a refresher. It'll be up there, okay? Coach Mark. Yeah. Remember when uh, we would do jiu-jitsu on a lesson, we would drive, and we would bring out the video camera? Oh, yeah. And they would just tell you to put it away? Oh, yeah. It was all secret back then. You could not videotape or do jiu-jitsu in the 90s. It was just like forbidden. And, and the stuff they would teach you in hindsight was so basic. It was pass <laughs> under the leg, pass the guard, like straight arm bar, triangle. Secret, top secret stuff. Um, on the East Coast, as far as I know, it's definitely in Virginia, the uh, majority of the East Coast is only our teacher of Vader's And a couple of guys, a couple of, uh, like, I think Enzo has been in New York for a long time. But that would be York City. But yeah, really doesn't count the South. Coast. We used to do something like that. Um, it's definitely Professor Pedro Sauer. And then you had Florida, you had uh, Marcelo. Uh, coming in late in the 2000s, but for a while, uh, we did, it was just business hours to get to this, only thing you found anywhere. Um, and that's because Chuck Norris, Dixon Gracie, over in LA, Chuck Norris introduced the Gracie family to, correct me if I'm wrong, to the military. Everybody in the United States, martial arts community, the military wanted it. The professor started teaching um, with Danny, Danny, uh, Guru Danny Monsanto, who is now working with uh, John John Machado, and uh, the SEAL teams 
start training it into DVDs. 